Hey, I'm Uncle Steph. So for 2025 and 2026 and going forward, what are the two top programming languages you should know if you want to succeed in the marketplace? Now, don't get me wrong. There's such demand for such a variety of programming languages and technologies out there. Don't let the AI, the AI doomers fool you in that regard. Nonetheless, there are two languages that really stand out and I have the data to prove that these are the two languages you should learn. This video is sponsored by Savala. Savala is a platform as a service, a modern hosting platform with transparent pricing. You know what you get, no hidden fees. You pay only for what you use, no surprise bills or limits. Seamlessly deploy and host your apps, databases, and static sites with cloud native performance with the ease you love from Heroku without its aging tech or high cost. Enjoy unlimited collaborators, unlimited parallel builds, and no fixed plans. Leverage Google Kubernetes engine across 25 regions, plus Cloudflare for best in class reliability and speed. Native support for trunk based and Git flow workflows means your team deploys just like Heroku. Preview your changes instantly with preview apps and static sites and launch in one click with ready built templates. Get started free with a $50 credit link below. So you hear people, they're talking about Rust, they're talking about Go, Dart. But again, those languages are, as I've been saying for years, they're on the margins. They're not going to be mainstream. They're not going to be the key languages for 2025. So what are we looking at? We're looking at a languages that are widely used. They're languages that you can't get around. So if you're talking about the web browser, you're talking about the server, you're talking about web UIs, AI, AI development, AI labs. You're looking at languages that have a massive ecosystem, huge communities, and there are a ton of jobs. That might be the most important thing. So it ain't Ruby. So the first language, of course, is JavaScript. Now, everybody's favorite JavaScript. Yes, it's kind of a quirky language. It doesn't have, uh, it's quirky. But it's, uh, it's the only tool for front-end development. So if you think about React, Vue, uh, Angular, it's all JavaScript, right? You got to know that language just for those tools right there. It's also very popular on the server side with things like Node and ExpressJS and others. So JavaScript is uh, one of those technologies that uh, you just can't get around. Even if you wanted to get around it, even if you hated JavaScript, I don't think there's a way around it. As I said, you even have full stack frameworks like Next.js and Express. And there's, you know, you know, JavaScript, there's probably 10,000 others out there. So it's just everywhere. You got a huge ecosystem, right? NPM, I think there's like one, two, no, close to 2 million plus packages. 98% of them suck, but you know, nonetheless, there's so much out there. It's such a broad tool that you just can't escape it in terms of the technology. Even in the AI space, JSON is used to exchange information from AIA to B and all over the place. So it's a universal. If you're going to uh, if you're going to be a developer, you should have at least an understanding of the fundamentals of JavaScript. There's no question about it. I just wanted to take a little shortcut away from the. I'll get to the second language in a second. The jobs issue. You're hearing about all these layoffs. Oh my God, Microsoft's laying off 5,000 people here, 10,000 people there. It sounds like a lot, right? but everything is contextual. At the end of the day, it's less than 10% of Microsoft's workforce, entire workforce. I can understand you may freak out if they uh, were firing 50% of their employees or 40% or 30% or something, but they're less than 10%. I know it seems like a lot and there's a lot of raw numbers of people, but it's around the whole world. And you know, we got 7 billion people in the world. That said, what's actually going on now is, well, a few things. A, as I mentioned in previous videos, there is overhiring during the pandemic boom. Uh, they are uh, dealing with a recession. I think there's a slowdown in the market. It's, it's, not, it's not officially a recession, but we could be in one now. So I think there is definitely a slowdown. And number three, of course, the 800 pound nerd in the room is AI. So AI is, is taking away certain older jobs. A lot of jobs that AI is replacing, by the way, it's not necessarily coder. It's much more about middle management, paper pushers. 
those type of jobs, they're at risk. But this is transitional, meaning that once uh, the dust settles and companies like Microsoft and others figure out what they have to do, they're going to rehire and be hiring people with the right skills. And these two languages are fundamentals to the are fundamental to those right skills. So for example, IBM famously, I think they laid off 8,000 people, and a short time later, they hired another 8,000 people, and people are going, oh, what's going on with Microsoft? What are they, stupid? No. If you're, I don't know, I'm gonna make a, ba a basic analogy. If you are a shop that uh, is, does a lot of plumbing, and you have a lot of plumbers on staff, and then you shift over to electricity, you're going to fire plumbers and you're going to hire electricians, right? That is what is happening now. So IBM, to use that example, they basically were offloading for the last couple of years their traditional application development um, business. Just like, I don't know, 15 years prior, they were one of the prominent laptop makers. They made some of the best Windows laptops in the world. They made the uh, ThinkPads. So they sold that off and that became, I think it's Lenovo, and uh, so they left that business. They did full stack application development. They even that took Swift at one point, turned into a service side language, very performant. And anyway, they dumped all that. Now they're in big time with AI and quantum computing. So old jobs replaced by new. This is common. The second language that uh, you want to get into, of course, is Python. Python is the king of AI, the king of data science. If you look at the AI and the machine learning frameworks, it's all, you know, PyTorch, TensorFlow, JAX, it's all Python first, right? If you're gonna be handling big data analysis with pandas, you got pandas and NumPy, I never used that personally. Yeah. Anyway, all the data pipelines are all managed with Python code. Even I've seen, um, even rendering farm engines will be all scripted by Python. I know this good friend of mine worked for a big uh, production studio and they were they were looking for Python coders to basically just manage all the uh, scripts or use them, manage all the uh, video rendering. So Python's popular because it has a very clean s syntax. It's uh, easy to be very productive with the language. It's a very levered language, meaning a few lines of code gets you a lot of output. So it's used a lot in the research community. It's used in prototyping. Um, and it has a massive community like JavaScript, right? There are millions of tutorials, transformers, open AIs, uh, Python SDK. Python is everywhere. So besides all the AI stuff, Python is pretty widely used in full stack uh, development. So there are, there are Python uh, frameworks like Django and uh, Again, its main focus, though, is basically going to be in the whole uh, AI space. It's, just, it's big that way. Another reason why these two languages are so popular because they're so widely used. They're used in the startup world because they're easy to work with. They're fast. Uh, they're used in enterprise worlds. For, so, for example, uh, major banks will, new, will use Node.js because it's low latency. Uh, Netflix uses Node. It's, uh, yeah, that's it. There you go. Python is the glue language as well, meaning it's used to stitch together different processes. That's it. So how about jobs? What about jobs? Well, let me take a look. Let's take a look. So I did a little search on the job opportunities for Python. Yes, there are phantom jobs, but there are phantom jobs in everywhere. But you got the most phantom jobs, of course, is Python JS, which indicates that there's the most interest in that. So when the phantom job thing kind of fades, you're still going to see the same result in actual jobs. So uh, a recent developer survey of popularity in 2024 Stack Overflow developer survey, JavaScript was the most used language. 62% of people use JavaScript. That means many, many projects use JavaScript. And Python, the second at 51%, uh, this is for many years running. Uh, JavaScript has topped the survey every year, so except for 2013, 2014. So it's, it's, not, it's not a flash in the pan technology. And again, because it is dominant on, well, there's no, no other competition on the client side, right? It's gonna be around forever. It's lightweight, it's easy to work with. Let's look at open source activity. According to GitHub's Octoberverse 224 report, 
2024 report, Python overtook JavaScript as the most popular language on GitHub, largely driven by AI, data science, and machine learning projects, while JavaScript remains the lingua, lingua franca for the web frameworks and tooling. Lingua franca means uh, it's, you know, it's, it's used everywhere. The job market demand is pretty strong, so 16,200 Python jobs, about 16,500 Java, JavaScript jobs, uh, with the JavaScript, you're looking at Node.js, React, full stack. For Python, you're looking at backend, AI, ML, full stack. That's it. Uh, between the two languages, you got over 29,600 openings uh, combined. So what's the bottom line? Uh, JavaScript remains indispensable for web scale UIs, server-side runtimes, Node, Edge, full stack frameworks, while Python rules the uh, AI world, data pipelines, rapid prototyping. They both have massive ecosystems, huge ecosystems, community support, and sh the uh, sheer volume of job openings, which I'm just reading this verbatim, and the sheer volume of job openings makes them the clear top two bets for developers in 2025 and going forward. A couple of closing thoughts, you know, I've been in the game for uh, over 30 years now. Uh, light and easy always wins, always wins. So JavaScript and Python, though they have their problems like any other language, they're not as heavy as C or C++, or not as heavy as uh, C Sharp, not as heavy as Java. That's why they're doing so well. They have the ecosystems behind it, you know, JavaScript's got a lock on the front end, the client side, so that's uh, that's it. It's guaranteed. So if you're wondering what languages to learn, in terms of the data that I just presented, those are the two obvious ones. That all said, whether you learn JavaScript or Python, doesn't matter which one you go first. Once you've learned one programming language, all the rest become easy. But here's the thing. When you jump into a language, you're jumping into an ecosystem. So there's a particular ecosystem in JavaScript to get your head wrapped around, and it's idiosyncrasies, if that's a word. Python, same thing. Um, yeah. That's why you learn these things. So there you go. My last point, I'm a big advocate now of getting into AI technologies. I always tell people, learn your fundamentals of code. Of course, JavaScript, Python, I've been saying this for a while. Learn the basics of the web stack and then just jump into AI uh, with two feet. Hugely productive, hugely productive. It reminds me of the web in 1994 when this all started coming out. Don't be like the old school thick client developers, the Windows only developers, the VB6 people. Uh, be the nimble people who said, hey, this is the future. The web is the future. When you jump into an emerging technology uh, technology as AI is right now, AI development and all, all, all of these different facets, it's going to open up. That's the hack to get your first job. If you're a junior and you're like, I can't find a job. Yeah, if you're looking to get a job as a React developer as a junior, mm, not right now. A little more difficult. But if you get into agentic development, AI stuff, the chances of you getting a job will skyrocket. But again, the uh, misconception is that you're going to somehow use AI and without having any development skills. That's not true. You may get a few things out the door, but it'll be pretty rough. Having looked at it myself, I did an example in a previous um, video where I showed you AI, what AI could do, it's very powerful, but uh, creating an, uh, an agent, but a very simple agent, but you still need to know your Python code. So learn this stuff. Development is not dead, it's just changing. If you're smart, you learn Python and JavaScript, and then you jump deep into the AI stuff. As you're learning Python and JavaScript, by the way, and I would suggest my courses below, I'm biased. I think they're the bee's knees, but... Uh, you should, as you learn, you should be working with AI code editors, starting to get to know them. I can't recommend one or the other, whether it be Gemini, Grok, or uh, OpenAI, GPT, GPT uh, Cloud. It's always shifting. 
So right now, Claude seems to be the best right now, but that could change. Well, it could be right now. I think Rock, the latest Rock, Rock 4 could be the best right now. Always change, it doesn't matter. As long as you understand what it is like working with these tools, then you'll be able to switch in rock and roll, just like you work from IDE 1 to 2 to 3, from JavaScript to Java to Python. Once you get your head wrapped around the fundamental concepts and ideas, everything becomes easy. Hey, I'm Uncle Steph. If you disagree with anything I said in the video, please comment below. If you agree with what I, with what I said in the videos, please comment below. If you don't like my long hair, give me two thumbs down. If you're a fan of Ruby, skip this channel. Um, that's it.